We are live. Hello, everyone. I am Brandi Keeler, Assistant Director of Admissions at the College for Creative Studies, which is an art and design college located in Detroit, Michigan. And welcome to another CCS Alumni Live. CCS Alumni Live is a weekly conversation where we talk with graduates from the College for Creative Studies about their journey from high school to career. And today we are talking with a special guest from our Fine Arts Department, which is now Art Practice. We recently changed the name of Fine Arts to Art Practice to give credence to and acknowledge all different types of art makers, right? Um, indigenous, uh, Black, you know, people of color artists from a variety of folk practices as well as traditional fine arts. So I'm going to read the bio for today's guest and then we will get started with our conversation. So 2006 CCS graduate Sarah Buer, um, graduate with her degree in fine art and has been living in the Pacific Northwest for the past 10 years, working full time as an artist. I'm excited to talk to her full time artist, always exciting to, to learn about their journey. She focuses on painting and drawing landscapes. Prior to moving to Portland, Stephanie had spent over a decade observing the urban landscapes here in Detroit, Michigan. She has an intimate appreciation of urban desolation and a love for the once prosperous buildings that have been abandoned to, the time, to time and the elements. Her works in both oil and charcoal, charcoal capture the photo-like detail, the layers of gritty history that accumulate as these places succumb to the manipulation of vandals, artists, and the steady persistence of nature. Stephanie has shown her work through different galleries and shows and art fairs all over the country and the world. I mean, seriously, like all over. I was looking at her resume and she's had her work shown in New York, Tokyo, Miami, LA, Melbourne, Paris, Berlin, Detroit, uh, Portland, of course, Honolulu, <laughs> just to name a few. So I'm really excited to uh, join Stephanie into our live today so we can get the conversation started. Stephanie, I sent a request, so hopefully she can join us. There you are. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I am well. I am well. I'm excited to talk to you today about <laughs> your journey. I was, um, so it, a lot of these alumni lives, I have connections to the alumni and I love the conversations mm -hmm. with them, but I really appreciate the conversation with people I've never met because I'm learning more about our alum and the work that they're doing. And when I looked at your artwork, at first, I was like, oh, these photos. I'm like, wait, these are paintings and drawings. Oh, my God. Your work is incredible. Thank incredible, you. incredible. Thanks for um, having me. I, I'm, it's, it's my honor. So, <laughs> Stephanie, the way this works, and for folks who are, I see some folks are joining us here on the live as well, the way this works is I have a few questions that I'll ask you about your journey from career to high school, but also anybody tuning in, if you all have questions about being a working artist, being a CCS graduate, any of the things that we're discussing in the conversation today, and you want more context or you have questions of your own, make sure to drop those in the Q&A box or the comment box at the bottom of Instagram. And I'll make sure we in include those in the questions <laughs> in our conversation today. So I was wondering if you could bring us up to speed and tell us a little bit about what you're working on now and what work looks like for you today as, an, as a full-time artist. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking a little bit different than normal right now. I'm in, um, I just moved to uh, Vancouver, BC. Mm. I decided after, oh, how long has it been? Maybe. It's been a long time since I graduated, 2006. So uh, it took me that long to decide that I wanted to go back to school to get my master's. Ah. So that's my focus right now. Still mm -hmm. like going, doing group shows and stuff. But I'm mostly, mm -hmm. um, I'm up here going to Emily Carr. Oh, nice. Design. Yeah. So I'm, and I'm in quarantine right now. So my life is very boring at the moment. <laughs> and you said you're going to pursue what, what degree path? Oh, art. So what, what is it that made you decide to go back to school after all this time? Uh, you know, it's something I've always wanted to do ever since I was at CCS. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the people I graduated went on to do that, but I kind of have this way about me where I wanted to go do the thing first, make sure I liked it, you know, 10 years later. 
I decided. I also really want to teach. I feel like after working so long in the field, mm -hmm. it sounds like a very rewarding, maybe a little bit more stable uh, thing to do mm -hmm. for teach as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I was actually, we, I uh, was doing a presentation earlier today on portfolio prep with a teacher who's a CCS alum. And she was talking about that stability that comes with that, that she said, I initially did just like, oh, it's an extra semester of school. Why not have this in the background? She's like, this has been the most consistent thing, you know, while she's also doing her art, but you've been a full-time artist for Oh, like a decade, right? Like yeah. well, quite a, over a decade. Um, and so tell me a little bit about what the work of a practicing artist looks like for someone who's doing their art to make a living. Yeah, it's, uh, and I mostly do gallery work too, which mm -hmm. I think is a little bit um, maybe uncommon. I, my work is, it doesn't really translate to much else other than like the imagery and the gallery and maybe museum shows and stuff. So mm -hmm my day to day or whatever you want to call it is just, you know, going out and finding inspiration and just painting, you know, networking mm -hmm. with galleries, with other artists, mm -hmm. kind of like hustle. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and by the looks of your resume, you've been hustling hard. Like I literally, I was just like, Oh my gosh, where <laughs> has, has Stephanie not shown work? How is it that you have been able to, to, um, have your work seen in so many different places? I'm so lucky. I think a lot of it is um, going out. When I, when I first moved to Portland to work full, full time, I would go to shows and coffee shops. I would go to shows anywhere. I mean, that's where I first, my first show was in a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And then um, the guy who owned that coffee shop just happened to be randomly good friends with Andrew Hosner at ThinkSpace. And so then that, you know, through those connections, if you can find yourself in conversation with a really well established gallery or a very active gallery, I think a lot of the work I've shown all over is through that relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, they advocate for you. They you know, share your work, they spread mm -hmm. it all over and, you know, other connections, a good friend and curator in Portland who I travel with. So it's just, it's chatting with people and finding nice, lucky connections, maybe. <laughs> that network, that network. Yeah. And have you ever been like, um, I know some artists have like a representative that, that helps them with their work or like um, somebody who is their liaison for connections yeah. and things like that have you ever had something like that or has it all been self self work all self work mm -hmm. I sometimes get a little jealous because that sounds like a nice you know a nice setup to have someone speaking on your behalf I don't know what you like an agent or something yeah that's yeah like, agent. Oh, yeah. that would be lovely but I know I have no like um it's a lot of money to have an agent mm -hmm. and I have no illusions of grandeur about what it means to be an artist. And sometimes you can't afford those things. So you have to be your own agent and then hopefully work with galleries who will speak for you. Yeah, I wish that would be cool. I just wonder, cause I'm like, work is getting out there. So you're a great <laughs> agent as well as an amazing artist. Um, so, so tell me this, Stephanie, with the, the galleries that you've been able to showcase your work in, the shows you've done, I'm curious to know, like, what's been your favorite experience thus far in your career as, a, as an artist? I, um, gosh, I, ha I don't know. I really enjoy the traveling. I feel like mm -hmm. I never would have traveled. There's a really good friend of mine in Portland who used to own a gallery called Hellion Gallery, but he's invited me to go like show in art fairs and like we've been to Tokyo and Paris mm -hmm. and there was talk of going to Mexico City, but then COVID happened. So that, that dream is kind of on hold. But then also, you know, working with ThinkSpace Gallery. Yeah. I've, had, I've had a number of solos there and those people are just amazing. You know, they, they stick with artists for a long time. They do everything to support them. They get you in museum shows. They're just like, I mean, that it, that's as close as I think I've come to having an agent is just having someone who really believes in your work. Mm -hmm. and really, yeah, that really, it's like a 10 year long relationship now. And it's, yeah, it's been a real blessing. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah, I noticed their name popped up a lot. It, it seems like yeah. they do work. They, that gallery has shows 
or or spaces in multiple cities in multiple locations they have they just have their location in la which they just okay. moved to a new spot but what they do which i think is really unique is they're very active on social media and they're also very mm -hmm. active in building relationships with other galleries in other cities so they started mm -hmm. this series of shows where like um, I don't think they're still around the the print shop in Detroit is, but Interstate Gallery. Remember that mm -hmm. spot? Yeah, I remember them. Yeah. Like they would, you know, have group shows where like we'll bring artists, we'll use your space, we'll use some of your artists. But they would do that all over the country, all over the mm -hmm. world, and they go to art fair. So they're so busy working mm -hmm. and building relationships. Mm hmm. Okay, I have one more question. Is is fascinating the work that you do and and how you've been able to do it? Um, I guess. I have my uh, do not disturb one, but apparently someone still got through. <laughs> um, uh, but a question that I have for you is, you know, you're, you're currently pursuing your, your master's. It's something you want to do, but what do you see yourself doing beyond that? What's in the future for you? No, I, I, I honestly love what I do. I love being able to paint. Mm -hmm. I never get bored of it. I remember like right out of CCS, I, uh, went and worked in car design at the Cadillac mm -hmm. studio for GM. And I worked there for about five years, just kind of hoarding the money I made so I could pay off my student loans and be an artist. And um, while I was there, I was telling people, I'm going to go, you know, I'm just going to be a painter. And they were always like, if you go do that for a job, you'll hate it. You know, you'll, you have, you've heard people say that, right? I definitely like, say, yeah. Yeah. Don't do what you love because you'll to, you'll hate it and it's totally not true I love what I do I love painting I still do I'm sitting in quarantine painting away and so after I mean I'm still going to be showing and working during my MFA and um like teaching will be an extra but first and foremost for me will always be making artwork drawing showing yeah the more of this yeah that's that's good to hear because I'm like I, I want like I hope you still do because it's so so tell me this because you work so awesome um how long on average does it take you to do your pieces? Cause they're so detailed. Oh, um, you know, I think I've been doing it long enough now that I've kind of got, um, like you kind of, every day is like training to get better and better. And I, I've gotten a little bit faster, learned some mm -hmm. tricks, mm -hmm. um, but it's still, it's time consuming, especially mm -hmm. the oil paintings, they're layered and I mix all my colors from a very limited palette. So it kind of takes a long time. So I don't know. Maybe like a medium sized drawing would be like like three weeks worth of work. Oh, I can wow. generally do about two pieces a month is my like when I'm really busting it, that's about what I could do. That's wild. Yeah. Oh man. I I love these questions because I learned as much I hope as the, the guests do, but I know I'm learning so much. Um so I see we have a question that came in for you. So I'm gonna pop this open and see. Ah, I've seen this in your work, and this is a great question. Someone asks, why do you use, uh, excuse me, why do you like using yellow? Can you use any colors, or do you just choose yellow? Because I've seen that where you paint on top of yellow a lot, right? So you're yeah. putting that down first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, um, you can put any color you want down, but it's something I started doing while I was at CCS. Actually, I was playing around. It was in um, a figure painting class, because when you learn the classical figure painting, they're, they'll put like a warm color underneath so because oil paint is kind of transparent it will like give this like glowing effect mm -hmm. to the skin make it more lively and so I think I was in a landscape painting class and I just mm -hmm. thought the white underneath looked kind of dead and so I was like I wonder if I can like translate this figure painting technique to my landscapes you know and I was like imagine like sunshine in it bright and so that's when I started and I really enjoyed it. And you can like see it because there'll be gaps because I paint all the Prima a lot of time, kind of in a weird like layering method. They're just kind of made up <laughs> and, um, and it shows through and it shows through the thinner areas. And I think it looks really, and th I think it looks nice. Maybe it's all, I don't know. <laughs> I, I agree. It's funny because I'm, I'm born and raised Detroiter and I'm very familiar with some of the types of landscapes that you've painted, if not specific ones. Um, and I think there's, while there's clearly the, the theme of like desolation, urban decay, there's definitely a life to your work, you know? Um, and I think, I'm, I'm assuming uh, it has something to do with the techniques that you use, but definitely like the, there's life to them, right? Um, mm -hmm. And maybe that, that, that yellow underlay is helping with that. 
That's awesome. Great question to whomever asked that. Yeah, I get that one a lot. I think it's, I don't realize it's such a weird uh, technique. And then uh, people ask me and then, but I was, um, when I was at CCS, we had this painter visit. His name was Rack Straw Downs. He's a landscape mm -hmm. painter. Mm -hmm. And I was just enamored with his work. And I still, but very recently I was like researching it online and he used a yellow background too. So I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Someone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. I see another question has popped in. Oh, this one is uh, location specific. Do you feel like as an artist, Portland is a good area? Are there opportunities and is it affordable? Okay, so speaking as like a, a maker, um, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like it used to be. I moved there like 10 years ago and it was still fairly affordable, but it's um, in that time span, it's become very, very expensive. Like as an artist, I could never afford to buy a house. I can barely afford to rent there. You know, I think it, um, it just became so popular so quickly. But mm -hmm. when I, when it is, when it was good, it was really, really good. Like studio space was cheap and you had all these people coming from like all over the country to go there to make and work didn't sell there very well. So you had this like non-competitive, really creative community and, it was lovely. I mean, there's still some of that, but it's just becoming very expensive. Which I is think that's the challenge of places where they're up and coming. Artists are creating a scene there that drives a bunch of people, yeah. that draws up the, the cost. Because I, I mean, think about Detroit, you know, when I was in school versus now. Um, and it's just like, yeah. it's a whole different, you know, there's creative yeah. pain, but there's a whole different environment to the, to the cost of living and the pros and cons. Yeah. My whole family still lives out that way. So I go, I'm not as connected anymore. And I didn't grow up there as a kid. So I don't feel that connection that you have. But when I go back, I do notice it's changed mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. I go probably every, like maybe twice a year. And like from when, yeah, from when I was in school, I barely recognized some of the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, probably good for the city, but it makes it very expensive for creative people. And yeah. Yeah, creative people come in, they make places awesome, and then everyone wants to know where the creative people are. Then we have to buy someone else to go and make awesome again. <laughs> it's a cycle. Um, so let's, I want to do a little exercise where we jump in my imaginary time machine. I want to <laughs> rewind back to uh, Stephanie in high school. Oh and I want to talk a little bit about who you were as an artist then. Um, what kind of art did you do in high school? Were you painting them? Were you drawing them? What were you up to? I was. I um. I was actually in ballet school then too. I like desperately wanted to be a ballerina, so I was like training to be a ballet dancer. But I discovered drawing right around like middle school, high school. But I grew up in a very rural area, and our high school had terrible, you know, like all, practically non-existent art programs. So I would take the art classes, but it was mostly just me sitting in a room like making, you know, teaching myself how to draw or how to paint, which mm -hmm. was really fun. And, you know, we had this horrible art teacher who was just so grumpy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, would, no. I would take so long to work on things because I didn't know how to work quickly. I was teaching myself and she told me I would never be able to be an artist because I was too detail oriented. So she told me to go into art restoration. <laughs> Well, you can tell she didn't know what she's talking about because your detailed, amazing artwork is showing across the world. Uh, <laughs> so I'm glad you didn't take her advice. No. But, well, so tell me this then, because it sounds like that wasn't the best experience. No. What is it that made you feel like you wanted to pursue art if that was how you were experiencing art in high school? Yeah, well, I loved it. I loved sitting there by myself making work. But you know, when you're young, you're very impressionable and you often listen to adults when you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to these adults and I did end up going to, I, I had to pay my own way through school. So mm -hmm. I started out in a community college mm -hmm. and I did start out studying art restoration. Mm. And I, like three components, you had to do art history, chemistry and studio practices. And I did about like a year of chemistry and it was horrible. But then I ended up having this lovely, lovely um, art teacher at the mm -hmm. community college in Grand Rapids. And he was amazing. And he helped me build up a portfolio and really boosted my like confidence. Mm -hmm. Taught me how to draw and how to paint and um, helped me like get into CCS. So 
Now, when you went to community college, did you know right away that once you were done, you were going to transfer to a four-year program? Or when did you learn about, you knew that going in? Yeah, I just didn't know where or for what. I started mm -hmm. out wanting to, you know, thinking I should do art restoration. And I figured wherever I should go would, you know, become a parent after I was done. Mm -hmm. Then what in, in that process made you choose CCS? What guided you to the school? I think it was that I um, I didn't I was didn't want to move too far away. I was kind of scared to move far away from my family. But and then the two major art schools in Michigan were I think Kendall and CCS, and I was not interested in Kendall. I kind of wanted to like go a little bit further away, and I just didn't like the look of the school. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I went to CCS. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, we're glad you did. <laughs> CCS family forever. Yeah. Um, and and tell me this. Um, so first it was ballet, then it was art restoration. When you <laughs> did end up at CCS, how did you know? Um, well, I'll ask this. When you started to study fine arts, was the dream then still to do art restoration? Or when did you discover, like, I want to actually be a studio artist? Oh, yeah. I abandoned that one halfway through my community college after spending time with the professor there. Yeah. No, I was I was all in before I got there. Got you. So you were you're hitting the ground running. So then yeah. tell me tell me a little bit about um, what your experience was like at CCS? What did you find that was advantageous to where you are now? Mm, you know what? I I really loved it there. There were definitely challenging moments. I mean, art school is challenging, especially when you choose to work representationally. And I still get that even in the classes I'm in right now. Like, you really have to fight tooth and nail to um, keep within that language. Uh, mm -hmm. But when I went to CCS... I did a lot of prerequisites at community college, but one thing they didn't have there was any sculpture classes. So I had to do like, a, you know, a lot of sculpture classes to catch up with everybody else. And it terrified me, the thought of working 3D, but I ended up falling in love with it. And my, one of like my major focuses at CCS was stone carving with Cheeto, which was like, oh my God, it was so fun. I have such fun memories. I still think about going back to stone carving. Yeah, it was, yeah, that was... Yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's one fun thing about the I know we changed the name of the major to art practice, but fine arts, art practice. One cool thing about that major is that it is so interdisciplinary. So while you can certainly like strengthen your skill sets for painting or sculpture or printmaking, like you could also, you know, do bookmaking or performance art or installation yeah. art. Yeah. Bookmaking too. And I was really into lithography, oddly enough, and I actually didn't start doing these like landscapes until I think my like close to my last year because I was just I was the like studio tech for sculpture and there was like a really cool crew um I spent a lot of time with like Dylan Space Key and you know that we had a lot of fun together I really missed that I the, it's just such a fun environment of creating things with other mm -hmm. people yeah yeah I love that I was interdisciplinary I went in thinking I wanted to paint but then found all these other you know, I did a foundry class, which was so much intense. fun. I'm, I'm sure it's fun, but in my head, I think it's it. It was. I know when we do the iron pour, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a lot <laughs> of heat happening over there. Um, yeah. All right, so I see another question. Someone said, yes, we love Cheeto. Oh, yeah, Cheeto. <laughs> all right, so here are some questions. Do you have any friends um, that you still talk to that you went to CCS with? Um, I actually still talk to Cheeto every once in a while. Um, I really, you know, social media is great because you kind of can keep in touch with everybody in some mm -hmm. way, shape or form, depending on what they do. I've, you know, yeah, I don't know if they were wanting to know specific people. So I just like went into that, but You're yeah, like, generally, yes, <laughs> super close, but you know, we send each other messages every once mm -hmm. in a while. Mm -hmm. You know, I like watching um, Kevin Beasley's work growing and every once in a while, like we had this, um, we have like a grad forum class where you sit and listen to um, artists give, you know, talks and you can ask them questions and have studio visits and we had this art collector from I'm in Canada like in school in Canada so it's all Canadian based people and it was an art collector in 
I forget, Montreal or Toronto or something. I feel bad. But he had this slideshow of his home with his art, and there was a Kevin Beasley piece. And I, like, messaged him. I was like, oh, my God, this is so funny. And, yeah, there's some um, song another sculptor from my class she came to portland and we visited i don't know yeah yeah i'm not the best at keeping in touch but if you are interested in it yeah people make lifelong friends for sure definitely and spouses yeah. I've, i'm coming to learn through oh. these <laughs> there are a lot of a lot of love connections made at ccs as well I, um yeah married a guy who i um but we're not married anymore that's a story for another day but yeah <laughs> That's the real. <laughs> I'm going to have to call you after Instagram for that story. Uh, oh, my goodness. So, so um, tell me this. What would you say is the one, like, if you could only choose one thing that you can say you learned or gained from CCS that's really impacted your creative journey, what would you say that one thing, like, of all the things, was the one thing that you're like, I, I, I definitely took this away from CCS? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's really hard. One thing take a, I think I learned a really good work ethic at CCS. Mm -hmm. You're just constantly making stuff. You know, don't overthink it. Don't get too bogged down on whether it's good or not. You just, I mean, we were always up till like three in the morning. I remember like taping the windows on the sculpture studio shut so the security guards couldn't see us. And we'd like pull it back and be like, oh my God, the sun is up. What happened? <laughs> We were just in, we were just working all the time. And I think mm -hmm. I still do that. You know, mm -hmm. no matter where you find yourself, just keep making stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what keeps your, your creativity flowing. That's what keeps you in practice with your, your thing. Yep. That you and then if you like, you know, take that advice of going out to gallery openings and connecting and stuff, like have a, have a show ready on hand to go. If you meet somebody and they're like, oh yeah, you know, we have a cancellation or something. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm already ready. I've been working on things. Yeah, I have a show ready. How you know? So glad you asked. <laughs> mm -hmm. Someone says yes. Be the soul. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Um, oh, so this is a question. I know we talked a little bit about this, but didn't get into the specifics. What made you choose to go to CCS specific? I know you talked about Kindle, but did you look at any other four year schools, or it was like this is it? I know. I did. I looked at um, some like, I don't know the word, but like a regular four year university. Mm -hmm. I looked at some of those. Um, I don't know. I was like really excited at the thought of just going to a school that's um, like was specifically for art. Mm -hmm. Yep. They have good, they have good instructors who are making good work. And, you know, I didn't have to take all those extra classes like math and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so, some students have a weird reaction where I say, I did not take a math class. I know, right? I, yeah. I did in community college. It was all chemistry based and I regret it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, you know, they offered good scholarships, which mm -hmm. I thought, you know, was really, because I, you know, I, I grew up really poor. I didn't have anyone to pay my college. Any dream I had or anything I wanted to do, I had to do myself. Mm -hmm. I remember that was a big pull. They offered some good scholarships like portfolio based or need based mm -hmm. and we still do for anybody out there wondering <laughs> yeah like, of our students I think maybe a lot of I would imagine a lot of people look at art schools and they immediately think oh it's going to be cost prohibitive yep. it's yeah not. yeah I tell students I'm like you can look at that sticker price but it's no one no one pays that <laughs> it's like don't even worry about it this, yeah you're automatically going to have scholarships considered when you apply so you yeah. can just look at it for fun, I guess. Um, <laughs> all right. So I see someone else add a question. Uh, oh, this is a great question. What do you do when you have an artist block? Do you get artist blocks? And if so, how do you deal with them? I I occasionally do, but I I don't know how to say it, but I, like, I kind of don't allow myself to. I think in those moments, maybe I am feeling bogged down by the like idea of I have to make something good. Mm -hmm. But um. But you don't have to, I feel like I'm trying, it's always a challenge. Even after 10 years, you run into something that you've never experienced before. You want to, you know, you have questions, have to learn something. But like, even right now, stuck in quarantine, you know, I'm running out of images. I didn't get to go out and explore like normal because of COVID. Mm. So I'm just like, you know, you just pull something out and you just start painting or you just mm -hmm. start drawing or I'll just start drawing the plant on my table or something. So mm -hmm. 
I'm, I've, I tend to not overthink things too much in that regard. And I think it helps just start making something, go for a walk, take pictures. I mean, even taking a photo is a form of art making in my opinion. So, I mean, obviously that was kind of a rude statement, but like from my painting perspective, but mm -hmm. yeah, it all is. What do you do with it? Because your photos clearly inform your work and your work is photorealistic. What do you do with the photo reference? Do you ever use that in shows or do anything with the photos or is just the reference I, for your work? It's just a reference for my work. I save them all though. So I have this huge mountain of the reference photo of every work I've ever made. Mm -hmm. But then oftentimes I'll collage different images. Like one photo isn't going to give me exactly what I need in every way. So I'll work from multiple photos, you know, taken pieces from here pieces from there and compile them together but yeah I think yeah that's a good question though I think that is a common struggle an art block mm -hmm. yeah yeah and we've we've had that question in a few different IG lives with with different insights too but I think yeah. a, a, a consistent theme is like you know keep working <laughs> that's the bottom line for everybody like, which is hard you don't feel like it and in those times maybe go for a walk you know mm -hmm. Or like go to a, the museum or read a book or yeah. Yeah, Something. find sparks that inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here's a unique question. I've never seen this before. Do you have a YouTube channel? Do you do any live painting or speed painting? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> like technically I'm a millennial. I'm like on the older end of it, but boy, am I terrible at technology. <laughs> Just, I was gonna say you should have seen when I first started these IG lives I was not I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> Definitely I, mean, a lot of curve. I think it would be fun you know you could I could you know that would probably be fun to do painting tutorials but I, I, on the other end of it it's like I feel like I spend way too much time on Instagram or on social media or checking my email just the phone especially now classes are online mm. the screen is taking so much of my life up mm -hmm. that I might say like that would be cool but I probably won't because I don't need to spend any more time uh, I just need to make art I need to put it down and paint mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a struggle that's <laughs> real that's real yeah that's a, a, a real struggle when your work is online you know your way of communicating with people is online <laughs> like, like your leisure is online like yeah. at some point you need a break yeah even i was thinking about that even like doing i love to do yoga i love working out and stuff even that is online right now so it's like everything you do you know you want to look up a recipe it's online you want it everything yeah yeah the eyes need a break i need they a breather do. yeah so I have one last question. And then if there's any more that come in through the chat or the Q&A box here, we'll be sure to ask those. But um, I want to go back one more time, kind of be in both places, the present moment and in my imaginary time machine with you in high school with your grumpy art teacher. <laughs> and if you could go back in time, knowing what you know now about yeah. your creative journey and doing your work and the things you've been able to accomplish and knowing who you were sitting in that high school art class teaching yourself, <laughs> What advice would you give your young self about pursuing your creativity, knowing what you know now? Yeah, you know what? I think I thought about that quite a bit because similar to my high school art making experience where, you know, they were not very supportive, said I would never make it as an artist. While I was in ballet school, I was getting similar feedback. I was too big. I was too fat. I was too old, you know? And in hindsight, I was none of those things. You know, I wish times would have been different when I was younger, more mm -hmm. like they are now where people are, you know, really advocating for body positivity mm -hmm. or, you know, yourself. Mm -hmm. And I spent too much time listening to adults. I thought they knew what they were talking about, you know, and a lot mm -hmm. of times I think that they are, you know, they project a lot of the time yeah. and, you know, they project their experiences or their insecurities. And I would just tell myself, don't listen to anybody, you know, mm -hmm. do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's huge advice. I see some hands in the chat box. <laughs> like, no, that, that seriously is huge, um, huge advice because um, adults can give suggestions, advice, feedback, but at the end of the day, they aren't going to live your life. You know, yeah. your art teacher is not going to be, with you at 30 or 40 in your career, right? Yeah. Um, and you know what's important to you. You know what you value. You know what makes you come alive. And so I think that's excellent advice. Like, 
<laughs> listen to yourself. Like adults, they're there to help, but they are not the final say in your life, right? Yeah, faulty yeah. as well. Yeah, they mm -hmm. have, you know, mm -hmm. they have good and sometimes they don't, you know? And, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's hard to be a kid and be like, you know what, they don't know what they're talking about. But yeah, it's well, kind of matters your world, but it's good. <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think the thing to keep in perspective is like, no one has been you on your journey, right? So like, who knows what they're like, your, you know, whoever negative art teacher is saying things like, we don't know what they want to do when they were a kid and what they were told yeah. that influenced what they're saying now. Um, but no one else is going to have your journey, right? Um, but it happened a lot, especially for like the older generation that mm -hmm. they may have wanted to live certain dreams, but mm -hmm. it was even less encouraged than it is yeah. when I was younger. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, they think I talked to so many people who wanted to be an artist, a musician, mm -hmm. a writer, but their parents were like, no, you need to make money. You need to be an engineer. But I'm glad that nowadays there's these conversations about like, why do you, you do not have to do that. You do not have to like slave away for the money, you know, so you can retire and I don't know, go to Hawaii or something, you know, like all these like dreams, they feed you, but you just need to like live a good life that you love. Well, that's mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that, but that's like the realest. I mean, that's why I do this job. I'm like, yeah. I'm talking to teachers and parents and students every day, just validating these dreams that we have because the yeah. world needs people who come alive, who are alive. Those are the people who change the world and make it better. And the people who are alive are the people who are doing what they love. Yeah. People who are Do passionate, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. Like, don't listen to anybody. <laughs> I mean, listen to the people who, yeah. <laughs> don't listen to those grumpy teachers. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or fearful parents. If you're, if you, if you're a person who has uh, any adults in your life who are saying you can't make money doing art, send them my way. We'll yeah. have the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. Well, I have numbers and data. Yeah. You guys just like interviewed Serge Gay too, right? And he, yep. you know, he's someone I reach out to everyone. So he's a fabulous example. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people, even in the CCS family alone that I know that make that do fine, that mm -hmm. make good money, or even mm -hmm. like, even you don't even have to make good money, just enough to be happy. And mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I um, even though I have the salary ranges for uh, artists and designers, and they're pretty decent. Um, there's, I forget if it was 60,000 or 70,000. But there was a study done um, on incremental happiness as people made more money. And they showed mm -hmm. that it plateaued, I forget if it was 60 or 70,000. But after that, like, from 70 to 1,000, your happiness doesn't change. From, you know, yeah. 70 to 2,000, your happiness doesn't change. Like, <laughs> at that point, it's like you just have more choices and more resources. But, yeah, you know, your quality of life really is about the things that matter to you at that point, you know. So, so something to keep in mind, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, let's see. Are there any more questions for folks who are tuning in here? I see there's no more questions in my little Q&A box. Anyone else have questions for Stephanie? that we can answer before we end our conversation today. <laughs> I've, I've loved how interactive people have been in the chat. I've seen hearts just flying uh, throughout, the, throughout the conversation today. Um, I see someone says, wise words, wise words. And I definitely agree. <laughs> Stephanie, before we end today, where if someone wants to go and find your work or follow you, where should people go? Should they follow you on Instagram? Is there a website they should look at? I do have a website. I haven't updated it in a while. I think, um, but I mean, there's always work on there. Um, there's uh, my, probably my Instagram is the mm -hmm. most. So at Stephanie underscore, let me Bure. make sure I pronounce your last name right. Buer? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So Stephanie, at Stephanie underscore Buer, definitely go check out her work. I know I blasted you all with some of it yesterday because I was just like, Oh my God, these are paintings and drawings. Thank you. It's so mind blowing work. Um, Stephanie, it's been so lovely to talk to you today, to learn about your journey from high school to career. It's amazing what you've been able to do with your creativity. And I'm glad that you are an artist out here making art for yourself, doing the things that you love because it's inspiring to see. So Please. thank you so much for joining CCS Alumni Live today. I love your lipstick, by the way. You look so cute. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> And I got to get better at doing this. I'm sliding in, sliding out. I keep forgetting to do this, but I'm going to get better at it. I want to talk about the next CCS Alumni Live because we do <laughs> these every week. <laughs> 
So if you enjoyed the conversation today and you want to hear from more alumni about their journey from high school to career, make sure you join us back here on Instagram at BK4CCS. Next Tuesday at 3.30, we'll be talking with illustration graduate Sean Mack um, about his journey. So Stephanie, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you everyone who's joined us live in the chat today. This recording will be saved. So thanks to everyone who's watching the recording. And I hope <laughs> everyone stays creative and, and stays awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> thanks so much. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Stephanie. Bye. Bye.